Today we're going to be talking about mocking in your tests. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the different layers you can mock and some of the advantages and disadvantages of mocking each of those layers. Finally, I'll share my opinions on what you should and shouldn't mock and how they can change the kind of tests that you write. We're going to be taking a look at this very simple posts application. You can see by default today is selected and we're rendering today's posts. Clicking this week is going to render this week's posts and clicking this month is going to render this month's posts. By default, we are only going to render today's posts. Let's have a quick look at the component and then start talking about some of the tests we might like to write. A single component is called post.view and it is a very simple component. You can see here we're looping over each of the periods, a period being today, this week or this month. The next thing we're going to do is loop over each of those posts and then just display the post title as well as the date it was created. Jumping down to the script tag, it's a little bit more interesting. You can see we first declare some data, in this case the periods and the default period as today. And then we're going to get a reference to our store by calling useStore. This is not using a Vuex store, but it's using a custom implementation. However, the ideas are exactly the same. You can imagine this is just like a generic Vuex store. The next thing we're going to do is use the on mounted hook. If the posts haven't been loaded yet, we're going to go ahead and fetch the posts. Jumping over to the store, let's have a quick look at our fetch post function. You can see it's also very simple. All it's doing is making a request using Axios, uh, everyone's favorite HTTP client to get the posts. We're going to do some very light transformation on the data here. We then set this.state.post.loaded to be true, indicating the posts have been loaded. Finally, after that, we do another light transformation on the posts to get them into an array. We're then using a computed property to filter them. We're calling the filter post function, which takes two arguments, a list of the posts, as well as the selected period, and that's going to return a list of filtered posts. We then go ahead and return all those so they're available on the template. Just to quickly review the architecture of this application, there's four layers. We have the component at the top level, which is the post.view component. We have the Vuex store. We have the HTTP client, in this case, Axios. And then we have the backend server, which is presumably going to serve up those posts. What we're going to do is start off by writing a very high level unit test. It's going to focus on the component. So we're going to mock out the Vuex store and thus ignore all the below layers and see how this affects our tests. I actually have a test prepared for that. Let's head over to the mock store test right now and see how this one looks. You can see I'm importing render from testing library as well as the post component. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our mock store. One of the advantages of writing a unit test is you have very fine grain control over the different states of your application. In this case, I'm going to have three posts today, this week, and this month. And we're going to save a false by default. So we're going to make that call to fetch the posts. We then jump down here and actually mock out our store. We're going to use the use store function. And because we're mocking out the store, we have to return an implementation that matches the public API. In this case, there's two functions, get state returning the state and fetch post, which is going to make that API call. In this case, it's just a mock function. Having a look at the test, it is very simple. We're going to render the posts. Then we're going to assert that the fetch post function is called. We then go ahead and make sure that today's post is truthy. We should be rendering today's posts, but we're not going to render this week's posts or this month post. And that's because today's posts are rendered by default. Heading over to the terminal, I'm going to go ahead and run this test. It's inside of uh, yarn jest. And we're just going to say uh, tests unit mock store.spec.js. And of course, this is going to pass. However, if I head back to my terminal, head back to my store, what I'm going to do is delete this entire store and see what happens. I'm going to run my test, head back to my browser, and we can see, of course, the whole application is now broken. It's broken because we deleted the store and there's no way to fetch those posts. Heading back to our terminal, however, we can actually see that the store test is still passing. And this is not really ideal. Entire application is broken. However, my only test is passing, which is giving me false confidence in my application. You might observe that, well, this is actually correct. We're writing a unit test for our post component, not for our store. And technically our post component is still working correctly. While that may technically be true, in practice, this is not very useful. My entire application is broken and I want to know that it's broken. And that's not the case here at all. Let's go ahead and undo that change and then see what kind of test we might like to write instead. I've now fixed up the test and this should be passing. Let's just go ahead and verify that's the case. And of course it is passing. So what are our options here? If we head back to our diagram, you can see we're mocking the Vuex layer. And that means we're going to ignore everything below it. What I would like to do is make this test a little bit more all encompassing. It's going to change from a unit test to a bit of an integration test, which I think is fine for now. And I'm going to explain why I'm happy with this afterwards. Firstly, let's go ahead and see if we can move this layer of mocking a little bit lower. What I would like to do is move my mock from the Vuex store down to my HTTP client. And this is going to give us test coverage, not only over our component, but also over our Vuex store. So let's see how that one might look. I'm going to head over to my next test, which is called mock axios.spec.js. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It's very similar. We are still using jest.mock, but in this case, we're going to mock our HTTP client instead of our store. 
In this case, we're just going to say that when we make this API call, we should return these three posts, exactly the same as we were doing previously. Jumping down here, the test is very similar. In fact, it's almost identical. The only change is we're using a real store here, so we have to go ahead and provide that. The rest of the test is exactly the same. Let's head back to our terminal and give it a try. I'm just going to go ahead and run that one now. And of course, we are expecting this one to pass, and it is going to pass. Heading back to our test now, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm going to delete the entire store, head back to my terminal and run this one again. And we expect this one to fail now. We've deleted the store, so it should be failing. And it is actually failing as it should be. The store has been deleted and it's getting the exact same failure we saw in the browser. No store means the test is not going to work. And this is much better in my opinion. We have much more confidence because our tests are failing for all the right reasons. Let's go ahead and undo that one and just make sure everything is passing. Then we're going to move on to see what else we can do to improve this. So this is what I did for many years. I was very happy, happy, happily mocking out my Axios client, mocking out my HTTP requests and getting the right response. And this does work just fine. However, what I've been doing lately is exploring how I can move my mocking even lower from my HTTP client down to my server. And this is actually a great library to do this, which has become popular in recent uh, months or maybe in the last 18 months or so. That one is called Mock Service Worker. What this is going to do is allow you to move that mocking layer down one lower. We're going to actually mock out the requests. So we can use any HTTP client we like. As long as we mock out the correct requests, we should get the same behavior. So let's go ahead and see how that looks in our tests. I actually have another spec prepared for that one too. It is called mock service worker.spec.js. Let's jump in there and have a look at it. You can see immediately it's a little bit different. What we're not doing anymore is doing something like jest.mock. We're moving the mocking out of our test runner into our actual uh, library. In this case, what I'm doing is importing the setup server function from mock service worker slash node. These tests are running in a Node.js environment, so I need to use their Node.js integration. I'm also importing something called handlers. Let's go and have a look at handlers right now. All handlers is doing is basically setting up all my endpoints and saying what I want to return. In this case, I'm saying if we make a request to the post endpoint, we should return today, this week, and this month. Kind of the same thing we were doing earlier with our Axios test. Other than that, all we need to do is set up our server by saying set up server, passing in those handlers. Before the test runs, we say listen. After the test runs, we say close. And in between, we're going to reset each of those endpoints. Jumping down to the test, it's actually identical to the other spec. And so it should be, we're writing exactly the same test for exactly the same behavior. One of the really nice things is here, we're actually able to assert that our, our HTTP requests are the correct ones as opposed to mocking out our client. For example, let's say we decided to drop our Internet Explorer support. If we are able to drop our Internet Explorer support, we're able to make use of a modern feature called window.fetch. This is a, a HTTP client built into all of our browsers. So let's go ahead and see how we might refactor our store to do that. What I'm going to do is comment out my Axios integration down here. And instead, what I'm going to do is use fetch instead. These two lines are doing exactly the same thing. We're just using an alternative HTTP client. If I save this one off, head back to my browser, I can actually see everything is still working exactly the same. And so it should be. All I've done is change an implementation detail. I haven't actually changed the behavior of my app. If we head back to our terminal now and go ahead and run our mock Axios spec, this one is actually now going to fail. The reason, of course, this is failing is because we're mocking out Axios, which doesn't even exist anymore. So we're now making a real request with fetch to a real endpoint, which also doesn't exist. So it's just going to go ahead and fail. One of the nice things about Mock Service Worker is it doesn't care about what HTTP client you're using. All it's going to do is mock out those actual requests. So this is going to pass just fine with fetch. If we head back to our store and undo that refactor to use Axios instead, head back to our terminal and run the test again, everything is still going to work just fine because we, we don't really care about the HTTP client as such. We just care that the endpoints are returning the correct result. Another really cool thing about Mock Service Worker is it works in both the browser and in the server. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at that. If I head back to my server here, this is actually not using a real a real server at all. It's using mock service worker in the browser. You can see here it says mocking is enabled. If I head to my network tab, head to my post request, you can see here it's powered by mock service worker. So I'm actually able to use those exact same mock endpoints in both my browser environment and my Node.js test environment, which is a pretty neat feature. If we head back to our application and head to main.js, you can see all I'm doing is importing setup worker from mock service worker. Then I'm starting my server before I mount my app and we're going to get access to all of those same mock endpoints, the exact same ones I'm using in my test. So we can actually use the same data for both our testing environment as well as our local development environment, which is a pretty nice feature. Moving back to the different kinds of tests we're writing, you might observe as we move down the stack in mocking, we're actually changing from a unit test to be an integration test. And some people are not happy about this. What they would really rather do is write four unit tests, one for each of these layers. I'm not really happy with that. It means you're writing a lot more code for basically exactly the same thing. 
What I'm not saying, however, is don't write unit tests. I think you should write unit tests. I just think you should write the best or the correct unit tests. Let's have a look at what we might like to unit test here. So looking at this component, I think this is inherently an integration test. The reason I think this is an integration test is because it's bringing in so many different parts of our application and uniting them together. You can see here we're using our store here. We're implicitly using our fetch request down here. And finally, we're going to be using our business logic down here as well when we call the filter post function. This is something that has nothing to do with our UI framework. It's more about our business logic, which is going to filter the correct posts based on their date. So what I think you should be doing is writing unit tests for these kind of isolated modular functions. These are going to be pure JavaScript. They're going to be pure functions. So there's no global variables. They are even easier to unit test than your component. If we jump over to the filter post function right now, you can see it is very simple. It just takes a plain old array of JavaScript objects and a simple JavaScript value. And this is even easier to unit test than your post component. Another good candidate for a unit test might be this transformation down here inside of fetch posts. This is very simple at the moment, so I'm fairly confident it's not going to fail. However, if this was to grow in complexity, I would probably want to extract this out into a function and write a unit test. There is a kind of line of thought about unit testing your components, and this is not something I've found to be very sustainable over the long term. What you will see people doing is something like a shallow mount, passing in their component, and then calling filter posts and saying, I'm writing a unit test for my component. And this is just wrong. You're not writing a unit test for your component, you're writing a unit test for your filter post function, which just happens to be inside of your component. If you really want to unit test this, why not just extract it out into a function and unit test it as a unit, as opposed to kind of proxying it through your function using shallow mount. It's going to be even easier and faster to test like this. And by using shallow mount here, it's not really doing anything useful for you anyway. You still need to eventually write that integration test to make sure everything is working together. So why not save yourself the time and effort, just write your unit test around your business logic, and then use an integration test like I've shown you here using mock service worker for your components. You're going to have less of these tests, but I think you're going to have the same level of confidence and granularity in your failures, or at least this has been my experience. I had an experience recently with an app where everything was written in this sort of style, and we tried to make a big refactor to move away from using the current store to a different structure, and everything broke because all of the tests were so tightly coupled to the implementation. If there'd been more higher level integration tests for the components, this wouldn't have been the case. And because the tests broke and there were false positives, it actually gave me very little confidence in the application. Tests should be doing the opposite. They should only be testing behaviors and give you great confidence when you do come to a factor. And that's one of the reasons I prefer not to use shallow mounts. Uh, anyway, I think this is a good place to leave it. The main point I wanted to drive home is you can think about the different layers of your application you're mocking, how they change your tests and what kind of coverage and value you're going to get from those different layers. I would really encourage you to check out Mock Service Worker. Even if you don't want to use it for your tests, it's still really cool for having this nice development environment in your browser. You don't have to spin up a server at all, and it's nice and fast, and it's closer to what a real server would be without actually having the overhead of having to set one up and constantly reset the database. If you do enjoy, enjoy this kind of content, this article is actually an excerpt from a book I wrote called Design Patterns for Vue.js. You can go ahead and check this one out. It has lots of similar content in there, and I'll see you in the next video.